and welcome to my channel. My name is Rachel. If this is your first time here, welcome. And if it's not your first time here, thanks for coming back. So today we are going to continue with this declutter series that I have going on. And today I'm going to tackle bronzers and highlighters. A little disclaimer that I said last time in the blush one was, I don't really think I'm going to get rid of a ton of products, maybe a handful, but I'm pretty happy with where my collection's at at this moment in terms of bronzers and highlighters. But there are a few that are really old or ones that just don't work for me in terms of shade that I probably will declutter. But if you're looking for like a big juicy declutter with a whole bunch of products, like half my collection gone, you're not gonna get it with this one. So I just wanted to set that expectation right off the bat, but it's kind of like a collection video more than it is a declutter. So yeah, uh, so let's just get right to it. So I, I did count, but I forgot. So let me count my bronzers again, hold on. Six hours later. Okay, so I have 25 total bronzers and there is one that's like a bronzer highlighter duo. So I'm just counting that as a bronzer. So 25, that includes powder bronzers and cream bronzers. Actually, hold on. Seven hours later. Actually 27, I just went on vacation and I had these two bronzers with me, so I forgot. So 27 total. So let's go through each bronzer and let me give you like a little speed review on it and give you my thoughts. And if there are any things in here that I'm not using or are not the correct shade, etc., I will declutter them. So let's just start off over here with these kind of quote palettes, bronzer palettes. So the first one I have is this Alamar Cosmetics Brighten and Bronze Complexion Trio. I have mine in the shade Fair Light. I actually really, really like this palette. My only issue is the shade is very light, like far too light for me, unfortunately. So I don't really feel like I should keep it around. I've had it for a really long time. I got it in a BoxyCharm, I think. Or did I buy it myself? I can't remember, but I've had it for years. It is a beautiful glowy bronzer that is very blendable, very smooth. But this one in particular is very, very lightly pigmented. I would say if you are very fair, this could work for you. But if you are my skin tone or deeper, you would wanna get the medium shade. So unfortunately, in terms of the shade, this one didn't work out for me. The quality and the, the formula is great, but I am gonna get rid of this one. Next up, I have the Juvia's Place bronzed duo in the shade medium. This bronzer duo I absolutely love. It is one of my favorite bronzers in my collection. It is so smooth and buttery. It is again, a little bit more on the buildable side. Like this is the shade medium and I don't feel like it's too deep for me. So I would say you would wanna go slightly darker than you think you need to. The tones of these are perfectly like neutral. This one's a little more like yellow toned. This one is a little bit more warm, but not too warm, not too orangey. Beautiful bronzers, highly suggest. So I'm definitely keeping this one for sure. And then I have the Essence Sun Club Matte Bronzing Powder Palette. I think this comes in two different colorways, if I'm not mistaken. Sorry, I'm not trying to blind you with the reflection of the light over there. So I like this palette, especially for the price. I believe it's $10. These matte bronzers are really nice. My only thing is I'm not really gonna use the bottom two. They're far too deep for me, but I could use them as eyeshadows or something like that. The quality of these is really nice. Blendable, definitely more actually on the pigmented side versus the Juvia's Place one is a little bit more of a buildable one. So I really like this for the price point. It's nice, I'm gonna keep it around. And it is truly a matte bronzer as well as the Juvia's Place was a matte bronzer, which I prefer. All right, let's grab a couple of powder bronzers. It might as well just keep going with the powder bronzers. So this is the NYX Matte Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Light. So I've had this for quite a while now. It's fine. It's not my favorite bronzer at the drugstore, but it's not terrible. But it is definitely more of a pink toned bronzer, which is not my favorite thing in the world. So I actually think I'm gonna declutter this one. It is a truly a matte bronzer, but the tone of it is a little off for my liking. So I am gonna declutter this one. Actually, I'm already starting to declutter things. I didn't think I would be right off the bat like this, but. All right, next up we have the e.l.f. Primer Infused Bronzer. This is in the shade Perpetually Tan. I actually did declutter this previously in a, in a past declutter, I think last year, but I actually removed it from my declutter pile and kept it. 
but I think this time I am going to actually declutter it. <laughs> it's a little warm for my liking. I really can only wear this in the summertime when I'm very tan. And there are other bronzers that I prefer over this one. So I think, I think I'm gonna get rid of it. Wow. Okay. But it is a really nice drugstore, affordable matte bronzer, if you can find your shade. All right, next up we have a classic OG, the Physician's Formula Butter Bronzer. It's an old faithful, you know? She's reliable, she's great. The tone of this, I love. It's very just neutral. This is the original shade, just bronze, right? Bronzer. They got creative with the name on that one. I love this one. I think it is a beautiful drugstore, not even drugstore, it's just a beautiful bronzer in general. It blends very easily. Now the smell, I don't love. I feel like people talk about how much they love the smell of this. I think it smells like popcorn, which isn't my favorite thing to put on my face, but I like the bronzer, so I'm keeping it. Next up for powder bronzer, I have the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker Instant Warmth Bronzer in Shady Biz. This was huge when it came out, right? I mean, it was all the rage. It is a beautiful bronzer. It's very blendable. It kind of reminds me of the Juvia's Place bronzer where it's got that slightly more like, I don't know, actually this one's a little more neutral than the Juvia's Place, but the actual formula reminds me very much of it. Blendable, matte bronzer, buildable, great. So I think I'm gonna keep this one. I haven't used it in a really long time. I should probably take this one out and use it again. One of my all time favorite bronzers is the Flower Beauty Heat Wave Luminous Bronzer. This bronzer is gorgeous, gorgeous. I love using this for when I'm a little more on the fair side because it is a true neutral, maybe slightly leaning cool tone, but true neutral glowy bronzer that looks very skin-like. It sinks into the skin, it doesn't sit on top of the skin, and it really looks like what I look like when I get a tan. Not sparkly, just healthy looking, it's gorgeous. It looks really like gray in the pan, but when you put it on your skin, the effect is really beautiful. So I'm definitely keeping this one. Another great powder bronzer from the drugstore is the Milani Silky Matte Bronzing Powder. I have mine in the shade 03 Suntan, a great bronzer. Again, matte bronzer that blends really easily. This actually can work for me year round, depending on how much I put on my skin. If I'm a little more light handed, it works when I'm fair, but I can build it up to make it a little bit more pigmented when I'm tan. So I'm definitely gonna keep this one as well. Now, one of the high-end bronzers I have in my collection is the Makeup by Mario Soft Sculpt Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Light Medium. Again, a just beautiful, little bit more leaning warm, but still neutral leaning warm. Matte bronzer, it blends beautifully. It's really easy to use. Definitely use this more when I am more on the tan side. So in the summertime, I would consider myself a light medium to medium. And so this is light medium. So I think it's pretty accurate. When I'm fair, it's a little bit too pigmented for me, but I'm definitely gonna keep this one around because I really enjoy it. This next one I did mention in a what I repurchase video on my channel. I can link that one down below. This is the Wet n Wild In Love With Coco Face Palette. It is a bronzer and a highlighter duo. I really don't like this one for my skin tone. The bronzer is way too deep. And this highlighter is not very shiny. It has a very strong cream base to it. So there is like a cast to it, which is not my favorite thing. These powders are very thick and creamy, which sounds like it might be good, but in terms of like blending on the cheeks, they're not easy to blend and they're just way too pigmented and too deep for my skin tone. So I am gonna declutter this one. All right, so this is the Tarte Park Avenue Princess Amazonian Clay Waterproof Bronzer. This is an OG classic. I actually, before I was really getting into makeup, I bought one of these and I panned it. Like I used the entire bronzer. And so I repurchased it. Now, I'm not sure if they changed the formula or if they have different formulas in this shade, but this one is very shimmery, like almost metallic-y. And I don't really love that. Plus, it really only works for me when I am very tan. Yeah, this looks almost like a metallic. I, I don't like it. 
So it's pretty much brand new. I mean, brand new in the sense that I bought it like three, four years ago and haven't used it. I'm probably gonna pass this on. By the way, I didn't mention this in this video, but if there are things that are very old, I'm throwing them out because I don't wanna give anybody acne. Like I, I don't wish that on anybody. But if it is a fairly new powder, it just didn't work out for me personally, I will pass it on to a friend or a family member. This one, I feel like I barely even touched, even though it is pretty old. I think I could pass this on to one of my sisters-in-law and they could get some use out of it. But for me, it just doesn't work out. All right, this is the Kylie Cosmetics Pressed Bronzing Powder in the shade Toasty. I really like this bronzer. I did talk about one of her blushes in my blush declutter. I actually really love the blush and the bronzer that I picked up. I had bought these on super sale when she was going out of business from Ulta's website. This one is definitely good for when I'm fair. It's very buildable. It's more on the cool tone side, but it blends really easily. It's very pretty. So I think I'm gonna keep this one around. Next up, I have the One Size Made for Shade Bronze and Sculpt Trio. If you've been here before, you know that I love this product. I've used it ever since I bought it. I've been using it pretty much nonstop. Now I will say you have to be careful because it is very pigmented. I did get the shade light. I was considering getting medium, but thank goodness on their website, they suggested that if you are in between, you should go lighter than you think you need to. So I'm so glad I did because the medium would have been way too dark for me. So I would say if you are my skin tone, you want to get the light, but I love this powder bronzer. I think it's beautifully blendable. They come in three different tones, which is really nice. And it is a true matte bronzer. I really love this one. It's definitely better for me more when I have a tan. So I don't know how much use I'm gonna get out of it this winter, but I plan to keep this one around because I really, really like it. And then my last true just powder bronzer is the Marc Jacobs Tantric Omega Bronzer. I know the one that was super popular was Tantastic, I believe, but this one I picked up at TJ Maxx or Marshalls a few years ago. I really haven't got a ton of use out of it, but it is one that I am interested to keep in my collection because I want to get more use out of it if I can. The pan is gigundo, like it's almost the size of my head. But this is a really pretty, just neutral matte bronzer. It's gonna work for me more when I'm fair and it looks really pretty. So I'm, I am gonna keep this one around. All right, I do have one like bronzer and highlighter duo. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Film Star Bronze and Glow. And this is in the shade light to medium. I absolutely love this product, honestly. I don't think a lot of her products are very worth the hype, at least the ones I've tried but I do really like this one. And I'm definitely glad I got the mini, like the full size I will never pan, like I'll never go through that. But the mini is perfect for me. The bronzer side is definitely a cool toned, very lightly pigmented tone. So I don't know why she calls it light medium because I don't think a medium skin tone would really get a lot of use out of this. Unless you have a medium skin tone and you enjoy it, let us know in the comments. And then this highlighter is really pretty, more natural highlighter. It's more of a lit from within highlighter, which I really like. So I am definitely gonna keep this product. Plus it was expensive. So that's another reason I wanna keep it. All right, now we're gonna, oh no, I have one more powder bronzer. Two more, they're hiding. So I have the NARS Laguna. Okay, I talk so much crap about NARS and how I don't like their products, but I will say I do like this bronzer. I do like this bronzer. It it actually reminds me of the Park Avenue Princess from Tarte, but less shimmery. It's definitely more skin-like. It sinks into the skin, kind of like that Flower Beauty one, but this one is definitely deeper than the Flower Beauty one. So I like this one in the summertime when I'm wearing like more minimal makeup or no foundation. I love putting this onto my bare skin because I feel like it just becomes one with the skin. It is gorgeous. I will admit it, it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna keep it. And then the last powder bronzer I have is Hula from Benefit. This is another classic OG bronzer. I did have three of these. So I decluttered all but this one like little sample size because I don't need a full size one and I don't need two sample sizes. One sample size is fine with me. I have so many bronzers and if, you know, I don't see myself really going through this completely. And if I do, that's great. So I am gonna keep it. All right, now let's go on to the cream bronzers here. Milk Makeup, Matte Bronzer Stick in the shade Baked, an OG Classic, one of my favorite cream bronzers, honestly. I absolutely love the tone of this. I did for a long time have a sample size or like a mini size, and I had it for years. I had to actually declutter it because it got too old. I couldn't even use it up in time. So I got this full size because it was super on sale at Marshalls, so I just bought it. I don't even think I'll get through the whole thing before it expires, but I'm definitely gonna keep around and use it. 
Another great cream bronzer is the Fenty Beauty Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer in the shade Macchiato. Absolutely beautiful, more of a neutral toned. Oh, you know what happened though to this? Just looking at it, I can tell. I actually had root spray in my hair between my color appointments and I was applying this and I went in with my brush and went in near my hairline and then went back in and some of the root spray got into it and turned it almost like a gray, muddy color. I remember now, yeah. And I did try to use this recently and it, the color was so bad because it got mixed with my damn root spray. So I guess I am gonna have to declutter this one. It is a beautiful cream bronzer, but I have so many cream bronzers, I think I'll be okay. All right, so this next one is the Oma by Sharon C. Flawless in Real Life Bronzer in the shade Shady. So this is a fairly new one to my collection. I did pick up one of the bronzers here and I also picked up one of the blushes in this same packaging. Definitely different formulas, like the bronzer is very powdery feeling. It's not as pigmented as the blush. And this shade Shady is way too light for me way, 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 way too light for me. There's no way I'm gonna be able to use this even when I'm in my fairest. So I would say you would only wanna get this shade if you are very fair. So I am actually gonna declutter this one. I don't see myself using it. Even though it's brand new, I just don't want it to sit. I'd rather give it to somebody while it's still pretty new. This is another new one to me in my collection. This is the Makeup Revolution Ultra Cream Bronzer in the shade Light. This is basically the opposite of what I just said about the Oma by Sharon C version. It's very emollient, it's not powdery at all, it's very almost dewy looking on the cheeks, which for me with very oily skin, I'm a little fearful of, but all the times that I've been using it so far, I've really enjoyed it. It is so easy to blend out, like probably the easiest bronzer, cream bronzer that I've experienced blending out. And the shade is very pigmented. I would say you wanna go lighter than you think you need to because the shade light is actually almost too deep for me. But I'm definitely gonna keep this one, especially because I literally just picked it up a month ago or something. So I wanna continue using it. Um, I lied, I found another powder bronzer. So this is the Beauty Bakery Snackaroons bronzer in the shade House Blend. I love this bronzer. I think it is really beautiful. You can get it at Target. It's definitely a light shade. So I'd say if you are fair to light, this is gonna be a really pretty neutral bronzer. It blends very easily and it is truly matte. And I like that it comes in a tiny little package with this soft matte touch. Really cute bronzer, really nice. I'm gonna keep it around. Next up, I have the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. I have mine in the shade Honey Drip. I've gotten a lot of use out of this. I love the tone. It is more of a neutral, almost olive undertoned cream bronzer. It's more of a gel-like consistency. So it's not super thick, but it does really blend out really nicely. It's more, like I said, more of a gel-like formula, which means it's not super opaque. You can still kind of see your skin through it, which I really like. So I'm definitely keeping this one around. Next up, I have the ColourPop Super Shock Bronzer Matte in the shade I'll Bet, another one that is fairly new to my collection. I've really been enjoying this one a lot. It's definitely different than the e.l.f. Putty Bronzer. It's more opaque. It's more of a powdery, like cream to powder formula. If you've tried the Super Shock Cheek formula before, you know what I mean. It is a gorgeous shade. It is more neutral, and I would say it's very buildable. It's not super duper pigmented right off the bat, which is good if you are, you know, kind of weary of using cream bronzers. You're scared that you're gonna overdo it. You almost can't overdo it if you have my skin tone around my skin tone, this shade. So I'm definitely gonna keep this one around. All right, this next one is the Danessa Myricks Power Bronzer in the shade Light. I really like this one as well. Um, haven't used it in quite a while. It is definitely more of like a slightly warm-ish bronzer. Like it's definitely not a contour, it's a bronzer. I think I'm gonna keep this one around a little bit longer and get some more use out of it. It definitely works better for me when I'm fair. So I'm gonna keep this one around. It might not survive the next declutter, but uh, I do like it. It's definitely more on the, again, more opaque side. It's pretty thick of a consistency, but I don't find that it's hard to blend out. So I'm gonna keep this one. And then last but not least, I have the NYX Wonder Stick Dual Ended 
Face Shaping Stick in the shade Universal Light. It does have a contour on one side and a cream highlighter on the other. I, so I really, really like the bronzer side of this. I feel like the color is beautiful and I feel like the lasting power is so good. Again, me with oily skin, I feel like I can apply this and it lasts all day, but the way that I do apply this is I take it from the stick onto a brush and blend it out on the cheek. I do not draw it onto my cheek because I feel like then it's very hard to blend out. The highlight side is fine. I don't really see myself using it very often, but I do like the bronzer side. It is gorgeous. So I am gonna keep this one around. All right, let me organize what I've gone through and let you know the numbers. Okay, so over here on the right hand side are the 20 bronzers that I'm keeping. And over here on the left side are the seven bronzers that I am decluttering. So like I said, not a ton, but these ones are definitely ones that just don't work out for me. So I'm totally fine letting those go. I really enjoy all the rest of my bronzers. And I pretty much use all of them pretty regularly with an exception of a couple that I do wanna pull out, but yeah, so that's it for my bronzers. Let's go on to highlight. Okay, so for highlighters, I have 25, pretty similar to the bronzers. So let me go through these and let you know which ones I wanna keep and which ones I want to declutter. All right, so let's start up here. And by the way, as you can see, I mostly have powder highlighters. I only have a couple of liquid highlighters. Just liquid highlighters aren't my thing. I don't really like them. So, all right, so we're gonna start off here. We have the Super Shock Cheek Highlighter. This is in the shade On The Cusp. So this is from ColourPop. This is one of the highlighters that they did in collaboration with Kathleen Lights forever ago when she did the Zodiac collection. But this is one of my favorite highlights in my collection. I absolutely love it. It is this rose gold color and I feel like it matches me pretty much year round. It sinks into the skin beautifully. It doesn't sit on top. It is incredibly easy to apply. If you've never used the Super Shock Cheek Formula, look at that. Oh my gosh. It is so, so beautiful. And I love it. I love it. I'm never gonna give it up. And it's so old, it still feels exactly the same as it did the day that I bought it. It still applies exactly the same as it did when I bought it. So I'm keeping it. Okay, next up we have the NYX High Glass Illuminating Powder. Not to be confused with the High Glass Finishing Powder. This is actually pretty similar to the Super Shock formula. It is a bouncy cream to powder. It's really pretty. It's really, really pretty. I don't use it enough. This is definitely more of a champagne color compared to the On The Cusp. So I think I'm gonna keep this one around a little bit longer. I don't really use it, but I should, because it's pretty. This is in the shade Moon Glow, by the way. All right, next up I have the Lorac Light Source Mega Beam Highlighter in the shade Gilded Lily. This was a big highlighter back in the old school YouTube days. Do you guys remember it? I do. I remember Rob Beauty Christie talking about it. It is a very beaming highlight. Again, more on the rose gold side. Super pretty. Very, very like seen from space type of highlighter, but it's not glittery or chunky. It's very smooth. And so I'm gonna keep this one. One of my favorite highlighters and definitely one of my favorite drugstore highlighters is the Milani Baked Highlighter in the shade Dolce Perla. Ooh, this is so pretty. It is the most unique tone. It's like a pinky champagne. I don't know how to describe it, but it is so beautiful. It looks wet on the skin. It doesn't look chunky or glittery absolutely beautiful and there is enough product in here for like my great grandchildren to inherit this and they probably won't pan it so pretty absolutely love it keeping it this is one of my newest discoveries this year this is the highlighter from essence love love i've been wearing it non-stop this is probably my most worn highlighter this year it is just a gorgeous i would say slightly more on the lit from within side it's not super blingy but you can build it up to be that way but it's not chunky it's not glittery it's smooth on the skin i have the color sun showers love keeping it okay Here's my first declutter. This is the Essence Pure Nude Highlighter. This is in the shade Be My Highlight. I don't like this highlighter. So many people love it, but I feel like it looks too powdery on my skin and it doesn't give me much glow at all. Not enough to make that extra step in my routine to apply it. 
I just don't like that it has a pretty strong base color to it. I know a lot of people love it. It's just not for me, so I'm gonna pass it on. Next up, we have an other OG classic champagne pop from Becca. I bought this right before they went out of business when they said they were going out of business. I was like, oh, I need it. I need it. Beautiful, absolutely beautiful. If you've seen it before, you know it's not a new product. Very blingy, very wet looking on the skin. It's so gorgeous. It goes with my skin tone very beautifully. I love this for special occasions, keeping it. All right, this one is another one that I am gonna declutter. This is the Milani Highlighter Duo in the shade Spark Plug. I did buy one of Juicy Jazz's collaboration kits that she did with Milani last holiday. And this is the highlighter that came with it. And it's just too deep for my skin tone. I don't love how it looks. It has a dark base to it. it. Has two sides. One side is a little bit more blingy than the other, but both sides just, I don't like how they look on my skin tone. So I am gonna pass this on. All right, this is another OG classic. This is the Maybelline Master Chrome. This is in the shade 100 Molten Gold. Again, this was another one back in the old school YouTube days that really like, it was big. But I will say, I am very acne prone, like very, very acne prone. And this is so old, I do not wanna put it on my cheeks cause I know I will break it out. Like I'm just kind of worried about it. And I have so many other beautiful highlights in my collection. I don't feel like I need to keep this one around. This has got to be at least five years old. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna get rid of it. Next up I have the e.l.f. It doesn't have the name on it, but I think it's just whatever their highlighter formula is. This is in the shade 24 karat gold. This is a really beautiful highlight. I would say it's not super duper blingy because it's so hard pressed in the pan. It doesn't pick up on a brush super easily, but I really love it. I think it's gorgeous. So I'm gonna keep this one around. And this highlighter is one of my favorites in my collection. I tried to pick up more during their Black Friday sale, but it was sold out by the time I, I got online. So this is the Odin's Eye Solmon 2 highlighters. This is in the shade Warm Sunshine. This highlighter is so, so beautiful. The tone, it's like an orangey flip to it, gorgeous. The embossing on the pan, gorgeous. The packaging, gorgeous. You can pry this out of my cold dead hands. I'm never getting rid of this. Okay, next up I have two liquid highlighters I wanna talk about. Let's first talk about this one from Unearthly Cosmetics is the Incandescence Highlighter in the shade Basque. I love this one, it is so unique. It is sparkly, it flips from pink to yellow, but it is a very like serum-like consistency where it's very, very thin and it just melts into the skin super easily. Very beautiful, I love it for more of like an ethereal type of look to the cheeks. Absolutely love it. I would love to get this in more colors to be honest with you, so I'm definitely keeping it. And then I have the Flower Beauty Spotlight Liquid Highlighter in the shade Opal. This was one of the worst things I tried this year. I absolutely hate it. And I know I'm probably one of the only people, but I thought this was thick and chunky. I thought it looked stripy on the skin. It was very hard to apply. It was patchy. I didn't like it. I'm gonna keep it so I can put it in my worst of 2022 video and then I will declutter it. All right, we have this little little thing of powder highlighters. Let's go through this. So this one I bought last year because I did a full face of hard candy makeup. This is the Just Glow Highlighting Duo. This is in the shade Blushing On You. I am actually wearing the champagne one on my cheeks today. And actually I think it's really pretty. I think definitely for Walmart and the price point, it's great. So I'm gonna keep this one around. I actually really like it. And again, you have so much product in this damn thing. You could just buy this and use each, these two highlighters probably for the rest of your life. I'm gonna keep it. This is an oldie. Look at how old, I mean, do you guys remember when this Chris and Leanne and Urban Decay <laughs> collection came out? So this is the Beauty Beam Highlight Palette. I loved the crap out of this thing. I am gonna get rid of it though. Like I said, it's very old and I don't wanna get broken out even more than I already am. So I'm gonna get rid of this one, but it is a beautiful highlight palette. I remember absolutely loving it, using it a lot. Even though it doesn't maybe look like I use it a lot, I did. So I got my money's worth out of it. I am gonna get rid of it. Next up, this was a new one to my collection this year. I did win it in a giveaway. This is the Space Age Highlighter in Ray Ryder from Kaleidos. Gorgeous, gorgeous champagne highlighter. Definitely more of a blingy, uh, slightly textured, 
Like it's not the smoothest highlighter, but I actually think it's so beautiful. I love it. I love the packaging as well, so I'm gonna keep it. And then I have the ColourPop Super Shock Cheek in the shade Flip Flop. This is, again, like the on the cusp one that I showed you earlier. This is their Super Shock Cheek formula. It's very wet to the touch, this one, because it's pretty new. This is definitely gonna work for me when I'm more fair. It's very icy. So when I'm more tan, I don't love it, but I'm gonna keep this around for the winter season and get some more use out of it. All right. This is from Wet n Wild. This is the Mega Glow Highlighting Powder in the shade Precious Petals. Do you remember this? I was obsessed. Look at this. It's broken. That's how much I love it. And I panned it. I panned it. Uh, this was for a long time, the only highlighter I used. I loved it. I was the first highlighter I bought when I was really getting into makeup. I think it's time to let her go though. She's old. Uh, she's decrepit. She is uh, needing to go to her resting place, I think, for sure. But it is a beautiful highlighter. Okay, this is an old one, but I, I don't know. I can't get rid of it. I can't get rid of it. It's so beautiful. I did wear it not too long ago, and it didn't break me out, and it looked gorgeous. So this is from Dose of Colors, the Desi X Katie collab, and this is in the shade Fuego. This highlighter is so gorgeous. It definitely only works for me when I'm tan, though, because it is very gold. Oh, my God. It is stunning. <gasps> stunning. It's like wet looking on the cheeks, just wet looking. I need to keep it. I need to keep it, I'm keeping it. All right, these two Norns highlighters I got in the mystery box that I got from Odin's Eye. So this first one is Veil of Future. These are definitely more on the sparkly side. The blue one is Spring of Life. I'm gonna keep these because they are pretty new to my collection. I actually love using the blue one recently. I used it as like an eyeshadow topper because like I said, it is quite sparkly and glittery. And this one is a little bit more of a gold, but again, sparkly and glittery. Even if I don't use them as highlights, I'd like to use them as eyeshadows and they're stunning. I'm gonna keep them both. And then last but not least, this is probably my most favorite highlighter of all time. This is the Anastasia Amrezi highlighter. I'm so sad they don't make this anymore, but it is absolutely stunning. More of a rose gold color, wet looking on the cheeks, stunning. Take a sip of water for every time I say stunning. So I'm definitely keeping this forever, forever and ever, especially because you can't get it anymore. Okay, and then I have like three highlighter palettes. So this first one is the Ghoul Light palette from Unearthly Cosmetics. I did get this in the latest mystery box that came out for Halloween. Hi there. Ooh. Hi. So I really like this a lot more than I thought I was going to. I was kind of scared with them being colorful highlights, but they definitely show up less colorful on the skin. So like this chilling one is just straight up kind of purpley, icy glitter. The green one is definitely, see on my finger it looks really green, but when you use a highlighter brush and distribute it more, it's not as green. And then Thirst, I love as a blush topper. So I'm definitely gonna keep this one. Another one that I absolutely love, this is the Danessa Myricks Mini Lightwork Volume 2 palette. I love using these as inner corner highlights. Not that you can probably see, but they're colorful. So they flip from like white to different colors. I don't really use these as highlighters, maybe I should, but I use them as inner corner highlights for when I'm doing like a green look, I'll use Spring Equinox. When I'm doing a blue look, I'll use Blue Moon. Where on the eyes, you can definitely see the color flip. In the pan, it looks more just white, but I love using these, so I'm gonna keep them. And then last but not least, I have the Solmon highlighter palette from Odin's Eye. I did also get this in a mystery box, and I love these highlighters. I think they're so pretty, so I'm definitely gonna keep this one around as well. I love the different tones and different textures that they offer in this. Keeping it. Okay, so we have 19 over here that I'm keeping and six over here that I'm decluttering. Pretty similar numbers to the bronzers. So again, not a huge declutter, but you know, I don't like to declutter just for the sake of decluttering. I really wanna keep the things that I really love and that I enjoy. And I wanna get rid of the things that aren't working for me, that are super old, that I think someone else could get use out of. Other than that, I don't really feel the pressure to declutter. And I hope you don't either. If you feel like you want to, to kind of get a fresh start, that's what I like. I don't do it just for the sake of doing it. So 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. I am gonna do a lip declutter next. I have a lot of lip products. I did do a lip declutter even earlier this year and somehow my collection has just gotten ginormous. I have no idea how. Well, because I bought more lip products, Rachel, that's why. So I'm gonna go through it. Again, I don't know how much I'm actually gonna declutter, but I definitely wanna go through it, go through, show you what I've got. And so I wanna hear your thoughts down in the comments. Do you have any of these highlighters or bronzers? What are your thoughts on them? Let me know your thoughts down in the comments. And if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me out a lot when you do that. And if you're not already subscribed to my channel, I would love for you to subscribe before you leave. I do upload videos weekly, both beauty and fashion videos, and I would love to see you back on my channel again. I wanna thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye.